Hey, good morning. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. Thank you for all liking and subscribing to the channel. We're up over uh, almost 160,000 views and uh, appreciate it. And if you haven't liked, subscribed, please do that. Help me out. I appreciate it. Appreciate the support. And I'm going to keep going. Hopefully do Mark and then we're going to keep going through John and uh, hopefully helping a lot of people have an understanding or greater understanding or depth of understanding in the word of God. So I enjoy it. I love it. I've been reading it since forever. And if you're new, old, enjoy. It's a, it's a great book. And somebody asked me about, you know, mental health. One of the keys I think for mental health is reading your Bible on a daily basis so you think properly, and the Bible says it says it's uh, the word of God can be healing to your mind and to your body, to your bones. So you know, hold God uh, accountable to His own word by reading and asking for strength as you read the word and study it. So we're in Mark uh, chapter seven, verse thirty-one. This is Bible study number twenty-five. So uh, we know last uh, yesterday he was. Up in uh, Tyre, Sidon, up near Lebanon, actually, if you looked at it today, up near Lebanon, um, where he met a very tenacious and determined woman, the Syrophoenician woman, unnamed. We don't know her name, but she was determined to get healing from her, uh, from Jesus for her daughter, even after being rejected uh, three times. And the disciples rejected her as well, if you looked at that. So really four times she's rejected. She's pushed back. She's asked not to bother Jesus, and Jesus himself says, not right now. But she's so determined that she does get the blessing she wants from God, and a prayer answered, her daughter was healed. Today, Jesus is going to leave the Lebanon area, go down around the north side of the Sea of Galilee, over to the east side of Galilee, to an area near the Decapolis, which is, uh, I think it's called, called that for like 10 cities, 10 hilltops. Um, actually, a lot of archaeological evidence for this place uh, existing as well. And so we'll be in Mark chapter 7 today, studying uh, verses 31 to 37. And uh, another determined individual, um, which I like here, I say that because the woman was rejected and she kept coming at Jesus until she got the prayer answered that she wanted answered. And in here, you're going to see Jesus tells the people, Stop preaching, stop preaching. But the more he says it, the more they continue to preach. So interesting about that, the two back to back. So in verse 31 of Mark chapter 7, Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down the sea to the Sea of Galilee, then over to the other side to the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. Uh, I and they begged him to place a hand on him. I have a friend named Dave who is uh, deaf. He is hearing impaired, whatever you, however you want to say that. And um, he, he uh, struggles to talk. He tries, but he, he, he knows. He knows he can't make any sense. We, we communicate through text messages. Thank you for technology. Um, but it, it's funny, like yesterday, he was trying to get my attention, yelling at me. And uh, I knew it was him because he can't say any words, but he can make some loud noises when he has to. And that's what you're going to see here, that this man is deaf and he could hardly speak. And I wrote down here, the word here is mogolilos, megolilos, he spoke with difficulty. So this man could either be like a meltilis who couldn't speak and stuttered, or he was so hearing impaired that all he could do was make groaning sounds with his voice. And I just thought that was uh, pretty neat. So after Jesus took this man aside <clears throat> from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into his ears. Here you go. He's touching another unclean man, a man with a disease or some type of uh, ailment, impairment, or handicap. Again, something a Jewish push person shouldn't do because he himself will become unclean. But I just want to look at the greater picture here. He touched all of us in one way or another on the cross and became unclean for all of us. What? He took and he was an innocent man, and he took all our sin upon his body and became unclean for all of us so that we might become clean. This is just another picture of Jesus willing to become unclean, the God of the universe willing to be intimate with his creation. And he took him aside away from the ground, and Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Now, um, 
This is verse 33 of Mark chapter 7. I, I like this, and I, I can't say that this is why he did that, uh, if anybody has any insight on why he spit. But I was also a genetics major uh, in, in college. And one of the things that you find within uh, saliva is DNA. As DNA. And I, this is just a Rob thing. This ain't a scriptural thing, but he spit. And is it, it's possible, this is possible, that when he spit, he took his saliva and put it on the man's tongue so that his corrupt DNA could be perfected through the DNA of Christ touching his body. Just a, just, just a uh, hypothesis. And so I, I was just looking at that and thinking about that. You can get a DNA sample from somebody's spit and you can process that. Maybe Jesus was taking his pure DNA and putting it in this man's body so that it would go in and correct the incorrect DNA. And there's a whole story on that, but I won't get into that. Anyway, so he touched the man's tongue. He put his fingers in his ears. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh. And this is esten axion, extend axion, or a, a form of stenazo. And what that means is he groaned in grief. He groaned in anger. He groaned with great desire. And I really believe, and I believe this is factual, and that is that Jesus Christ aches for his creation. The creation aches back for Jesus Christ because of all the sin in this world. He, he had a world that he created that was perfected. And the Bible is very clear that not one thing was created without Jesus Christ or through Jesus Christ and him being present when it happened. So he groans as he looks at what was once a perfected or very good creation. And now it pains him and, and he hurts for his creation because now... We've been corrupted. We're in sin. We have difficulty. And it's very human because if you're a parent, a mother or a father, and you have a child and you see them in pain, in agony. I know when my son had surgery, when my daughter was almost killed in a car accident, literally how bad we hurt for our children. And so this is what Jesus is going through. He sees this once perfect creation, um, this man that shouldn't have these uh, uh, um, um, imperfections, but he does, and it grieves him. And so he cries out to God. He looks up to heaven and prays for this man's healing. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said to him, Epha, fa, tha, I don't know if I said that correctly, but Epha, fa, tha, you can look at it yourself. That's verse 34, which means be open. And here's the word at verse 35, at this. This means immediately. This is the word utheos. Again, again, I said in, there's 42 times in Mark where utheos is said immediately. And this is the 31st time, only in chapter 7, that Jesus says immediately, or immediately, he didn't say it, but immediately the man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak freely immediately. And that's the same thing. Not only can we be healed immediately by Jesus Christ, but when you ask for forgiveness and you invite him into your heart, as Lord and Savior, immediately you are a changed human being, immediately. And so um, he touches the man's ears, he spits, touches his tongue. And, and actually, if you read the Greek there, it even says he may have grabbed the tongue. And if you've ever had a doctor with a tongue depressor and he's checking your tonsils, he's going to grab your tongue. He's going to put the, uh, the two, what is it called, popsicle stick on your tongue and get a better view back there. Jesus may have done the same thing, grabbed a man's tongue, spit on it, put the DNA in his body. And it healed him. And so, at this, the man's ears were open, his tongue was loose, and he began to speak plainly. And there was another word there I was looking for, but the thing is that when his ears were open, they were open fully. He spoke plainly. His healing was perfected, it was perfect. And uh, Jesus commanded the people then not to tell anyone. But the more he did, uh, the people kept talking about it all the more. And the people were overwhelmed and amazed that he even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Now, that may not seem like much, but this is an important person when it says the mute hear, or excuse me, the mute speak and the deaf hear. That is literally a referral uh, as an authenticating scripture of the Messiah from Isaiah 35. And I did a study on this way back, but he uses this. Uh, also, when um, John the Baptist sends his people to say to Jesus, "Are you?" When, first of all, John the Baptist is in prison. 
he sends his disciples to Jesus to say, are you the Messiah or should we look for another? And this is in Matthew 11. Let me see if I've marked that. If you have that, go to Matthew 11 and I'll show you what I mean. Why this is important that the deaf hear and the mute speak. Because in this portion of scripture, in Matthew 11, Jesus uses Isaiah 53 to address John's disciples. And when they, in Matthew 11, verse uh, 2, or 3, and in Matthew 11, verse 3, it says, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? This is a, a question from John the Baptist that his disciples are asking. And this is Jesus' reply. And this is why I said this is a parallel kind of to the scripture we're using today in Mark chapter 7. And verse 4 says, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached for the, uh, to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. This is a direct quote if you have your Bible. Go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 says, these are signs that God will come to you. And how does he come to you and how will we know that? In Isaiah 35, excuse me, Isaiah 35 verse 5, the eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then will the lame leap like, leap like deer, and the mute tongue shall shout for joy. Now, what in this instance with John the Baptist, what he doesn't quote to John the Baptist or send his disciples back to John the Baptist, he doesn't quote Isaiah 35, 4, which says, Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with a vengeance and he will come to save you. He does not give that verse, by the way, to John the Baptist. So I can assure you that when John the Baptist asks, are you the Messiah or should we look at another? And Jesus quotes Isaiah 35. When he omits verse 4 from Isaiah 35, he knows, number one, that Jesus is Messiah. Number two, that he knows he's not coming to save him. So that's, that's an interesting thing to look up to just in itself. But it's significant here in this portion because it says that the... Deaf could hear and the mute could speak. A direct relation or correlation to Isaiah 35, 5 and 6, where it says when the Messiah comes, these things will happen. So you can look at that. Matthew 15, um, it says the same thing. Another, uh, yesterday we looked at Matthew 15, which also parallels Mark chapter 7. In Matthew 15, uh, we have the faith of the Canaanite one, which we just talked about a little bit ago. And then it says here in Matthew 15, uh, verses 30, it says, Great crowds came to him, bringing lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. And so all these scriptures, Isaiah 35, Matthew 15, Matthew chapter 11, and Mark chapter 7, all tie together as a proof text that Jesus was the Messiah because he did those things as prophesied 500 years earlier in Isaiah 35. So the people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, and they saw the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Why? Because they knew that scripture. Many of them knew that scripture. That would be a sign that God had come among them, and God had come down from heaven to dwell and walk among men. So Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he told them not to, just like yesterday, the more he told the woman, leave me alone, I'm rejecting you, the more she persisted. And we need to be the same way. We need to be persistent when we go to our Lord. Knock, 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 knock at the door and be persistent till we annoy him so much if you have to. Obviously, he hears our prayers instantly. But literally, show him how important your prayers are and keep praying for what it is you desire. Now, remember... If it's something of God, he'll answer that. If it's something to pour on yourself just to make, you know, fame, fortune, all the wrong motives, don't expect anything to be, and that's in James, by the way, don't expect any of that to be uh, granted to you. But if you're praying for somebody else, your intercessory prayer, you're praying for your ministry, you're praying for souls to get saved, those things are in line with character and attributes of God, the very desire of God. So if you're praying with the word of God, expect answers from those prayers and be persistent, don't give up. And so uh, the more he said, don't preach, the more they kept talking about it. Why? Because we know, why did he say that? Number one, they weren't qualified yet to preach. You could tell their story. They could tell what happened. 
But his fame was so renowned at this time, he didn't need any more uh, popularity. He could sit down and eat. He had trouble getting any peace, any rest. Uh, so that's just one reason. But um, the people were overwhelmed and they were amazed that he had done everything well. He does everything well. Creation, all the way to this is all the way back to creation. Like I said, it grieved him that the creation that he did very well and he said was very good was now corrupted by sin. And it grieved him to see his people suffering as a result of man's sin. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. So, and they were overwhelmed with joy and amazement. So, that's it for today. A short Bible study today. Mark chapter 7, 31 to 37. Also read uh, Isaiah 35, verses 4 through 6. And also Matthew chapter uh, 15 verses 29 and 31. They all tie together. And then if you want to throw in Matthew 11, that also speaks of uh, Isaiah 35 and the authenticating scriptures that point to Jesus Christ as being God in the flesh and his hypostatic union and the Messiah that walked among us as prophesied from the Old Testament. So I hope everybody has a great day. Please be persistent in your prayers. Be strong in your walk. Encourage one another and always keep your eyes up to Christ uh, and, and never give up. So have a great day, and we'll see you all tomorrow. We'll begin chapter 8.